Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I'd like to welcome you to Zwingli United Church of Christ on this beautiful Easter morning, this day in which we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, in which we celebrate our faith, in which we celebrate the Spirit being among us. And so glad that you are here. Welcome to all who are here in person and also to those who are on Facebook live stream. Uh, for those who are here, we ask that you uh, fill out the welcome sheets at the end of your rows and pass those along to your neighbor. And for those on Facebook live stream, we ask you to please register so that we know that you have been with us this morning. Do want to let you know a few things. Um, one is we will be having communion by intinction today. And that's where you take the bread and then dip it in the cup. Uh, there will be two cups. The one nearest the bread is wine. The one furthest away is grape juice. If you feel uncomfortable dipping the uh, bread in the wine, that's fine. Just consume the bread and then continue on to your seat. Also want to thank uh, the youth and the youth leaders for the sunrise service this morning at 6 o'clock. I'm looking around and I noticed that I didn't see many of you there. <laughs> ah, okay. There were a few people who were here for 6 o'clock and I really appreciate them coming to 6 o'clock and to the 9 o'clock service this morning. Uh, I know some of the tech folks have done double, double duty and just very thankful uh, for them as well. Since we will be having communion a little bit later, we're going to have announcements at the beginning of the service. And so the first announcement will come from Rick Rogers. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, on behalf of the Ministry of Stewards, I just wanted to point out an announcement in the back of the bulletin, but highlight it a little bit more. Um, about 14 years or so ago, we were sitting here deciding, or actually at the Boys and Girls Club, deciding on how we were going to rebuild this church and how we we're going to finance it. I'm here to say we are this close to paying off our final loan, our construction loan. We have, we borrowed $950,000. We were, you know, about a, a BMW short of a million dollars. Now we're about a Ford Fiesta away from paying it off. We're going to have a big party. Our goal is to pay it off by July 1st so that the $3,000 a month payments we've been going to the loan can go to other expenses in the church and help us balance our books this year. So we will be encouraging everyone to do whatever they can add a little bit more to the envelopes, and there'll be envelopes in the pews in the backs of the chairs starting next week, and we'll be, we'll, you'll, you'll hear more about it next week during our stewardship movement, but thank you very much. Thank, us, thank you for helping us get to where we are and paying off nearly a million dollars. That's awesome. Thank you. Never heard it put in those terms, a Ford Fiesta away. That's great. Okay. Also, just a few other announcements to share with you this morning. Um, I was uh, asked by the shepherds to announce that for any of you who brought casseroles for the breakfast that was held, there was a lot of wonderful food there, um, please pick up your casseroles after the service. That is very important, so please do that after the service. Also, Lyft Fellowship will be uh, meeting next Sunday, and so those of you who are a part of Lyft or would like to be a part of it, please pay attention to the announcement in the bulletin. And having said that, Please pay attention to all the announcements in the bulletin. There's a lot of things in there, a lot of ways to be connected to Zwingli United Church of Christ and the ministries that are a part of, and hope that you will choose to do so at some time in the near future. I have a few prayer requests to share this morning as well, and after the prayer requests, we'll have a moment of silence as we pray for those mentioned this morning, as well as those that may be in our prayer list in the bulletin as well as any other prayers that might be on your heart. So the first prayer um, concern is from Carol Reef. Um, she asks that we pray for our daughter and son-in-law, Stephanie and Mike. Uh, Mike's dad died uh, this past week, and also prayers for the entire Newbert family as they begin the grieving process. Also during this week, one of our neighbors, Cindy Narkoff, came in and she's dealing with a degenerative muscular disease and diverticulitis and all kinds of things. And um, she asked for prayers that day, but also uh, asked that we lift her in prayer this Sunday. And so prayers for Cindy. Also Judy Shuck, we have been praying for Judy's Aunt Florence who is on 
hospice care. Um, she also died this past week, so prayers for Judy and for the family of Aunt Florence. And also uh, prayers for Deb Hendricks' family and Sarah, her friend. Uh, Sarah is Liz Bibbick's sister, and we've been praying for Deb uh, some time ago, but she recently went off uh, dialysis, and uh, she died in this past week as well. And so prayers for, uh, prayers for uh, Deb's family, as well as uh, Sarah and her other friends. And then I also ask prayers for Pastor Allen and for the elders and for the Stephen ministers and for the other leaders while I am away on sabbatical. Um, even though I'm going to be away, I will worry none at all because we have such incredible lay leaders and such an incredible associate pastor. And so I am so grateful that I can leave without worry, that I can leave uh, with your prayers and that I will be praying for you as well while I am, a while I am away. So those are all the prayers I have to share with you this morning. And so again, if you have prayers to share at some point, please make sure they make their way to the office or to Pastor Allen uh, so that he'll know to pray for them. Pray for uh, whatever your concern might be in the weeks ahead. So at this time, let us lift our hearts to God as we pray in silence for those mentioned as well as others who may be on our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that we can be together in your presence this day on this incredible Easter morning, this day in which we can lift our prayers to, know, to you and know that you hear our prayer, that you act on our prayers, that you help us to be an answer to prayer. We are also thankful that we can gather this day to celebrate that you have won the victory of life over death. And that is something that you continue to do in our lives, that you will bring life out of death, that you will be, bring fulfillment out of whatever things that we may be struggling with. And so thank you, O oh God, that we can gather today to celebrate our faith, our faith in Jesus Christ. We pray these things in your name. Amen. This is a day. This is the day. The Lord rolls away the sun of fear, throws all past clothes, and goes ahead of us in God's feet. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad, for sin and death falls in the power of the rest. God opens our hearts to us in the new life. This is the day, Easter day. Christ is risen.
sound good. All right. Hallelujah, indeed. Uh, it is a good problem to have this morning. Uh, we have so many people here that we have run out of bulletins. So if you have one that you're sharing with someone else and are willing to give that up for someone who needs it, please raise your hand. Okay. And then if you need a bulletin, please raise your hand and let us know. Okay. All right, we're good. Thank you for that. Uh, let us now continue in worship. Will you pray with me? Holy and living God, like a tomb's darkness that gives way to light, open us this day to newness of life. Open us to your love, to your acceptance, to your forgiveness, to your peace. Open us to one another and to the possibilities you have in store for us. Give us hope for the future and a passion for life here and now. We pray in the name of the one who destroyed death, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And since God calls us to confess our sins before God and one another, we will now confess together publicly and then silent in silent confession. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we come before you to confess how slow of heart we are to believe your promise of new life. We resist the challenges of faith that come our way and the changes we know we must make. Too often, we fail to open ourselves to your promises and purpose. Save us from our selfish ways. Rescue us from all hurtful and destructive habits. Forgive our broken promises. Heal our broken relationships. Lift our broken spirits so we may share in the resurrection of Christ. Hear these words of assurance. God, our creator, gives us new life in Christ. Our redeemer prepares a table for us. The Holy Spirit, our comforter, calls us to service. This is the good news. The tomb is empty, sin is powerless, and death is defeated forever. gather this day in the presence and peace of the risen Christ. And so I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Good morning. Happy Easter, everybody. Good morning. I like those sunglasses. That's cool. How's everybody this morning? Good. We're good. We're awake. We're okay. Good. Good. I'm a little bleary. I just up at five this morning, but we're good. Uh, <laughs> uh, so. I want to make, I want to see if you can recognize these sounds and you, you tell me what it is, okay? All right, here we go. First one. Mm. 
A cow, right, right, very good. How about <laughs> That's a dog, very good. What about meow? Mm. Very good. Now, okay, how did you know, because so, I don't look like any of those animals, how did you know what those voices, what those were? How did you know? The sound. You've heard them before. You probably, have you been to like a petting zoo or something like that or to a farm? And those animals, you've seen those animals make that noise, right? Yeah. So like the w a way that you might say it is that you recognize them because of your interaction with them, your personal interaction with them. And that reminds me of our story today. So today, uh, Mary goes to the tomb and Jesus isn't there. His body's not there. And she's looking around for him and the gardener comes and starts talking to her. And that's Jesus, but she doesn't recognize him because we know that the resurrected Jesus looks different than what the earthly Jesus looked like. And do you know how she recognized him? Do you know how? She recognized him when she said her name. He re she recognized how he spoke how he talked to her. She recognized his voice. And that reminds us that we can know Jesus by reading the Bible, talking about him, knowing what his sound stories sound like, what he sounds like when he talks to us so that we can recognize Jesus in others and that we can be Jesus to others. So it's a good reminder that we can live out the resurrection, resurrection by being like Jesus and loving people. So let us pray together. Holy One, thank you for your voice and that we recognize your voice and your voice helps us to know you and to recognize you in others. Help us to be more like you every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining me. Our New Testament lesson comes from the book of Acts in the 10th chapter starting in the 34th verse. Hear these words. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel of preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in jo Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on the tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. May God add a blessing to the hearing and reading of these words this morning.
Thank you, Bell Choir and Steve. And thank you, Steve, also for the beautiful music during the prelude. And I'm also looking forward to the choir. It's so great to have such wonderful music today. So in the lectionary, um, you got to choose between two gospel lessons that told the story of the resurrection. Both of the stories a little bit different. Pastor Allen used the one from John 20 uh, for the children's message. Uh, the gospel I will read to you uh, for the sermon this morning is from Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us to the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been already rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. Not sure if I can say this enough, but Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Today we indeed celebrate the resurrection of Christ, a sign of God overcoming death and darkness with life and light. It is a day that we celebrate each year with hope in our hearts, a day that we celebrate with friends and family, a day that we celebrate with sunrise services and special music that tell the marvelous story of Jesus' resurrection. Yet as we gather here today, I wonder what it is that we, that you, believe about the resurrection. There's a story told by Anne Jacqua, an Episcopal laywoman, that is appropriate for today. She says that when she was sitting on a trailways bus heading to Washington, D.C., she looked up from the book that she was reading. And when she looked up from the book that she was reading, she immediately, in that moment, believed in the resurrection. I was saying the creed with the daily office with the prayer book open in my lap, she says, and looking out the window at the telephone poles and the trees zipping by. When I came to the words, I believe in the resurrection. I don't know what happened, but my guard went down, I guess. I really believed it completely in that instant. I mean, I knew without a doubt that it was true. In that instant, what I knew was that all my rational ideas about life and all the things I had learned from my parents and the church about if you do that, then this will follow, well, those things were not necessarily true. The rules didn't hold. It was just enough to allow me to let go of my terrible fear. The resurrection means that nothing is hopeless anymore. So, when did you begin to believe in the resurrection? Do you now? Believing in the resurrection is not necessarily an automatic thing. Let's take a look at the scripture lesson for today. For example, now first of all, there are verses after the ones we read today. Today is the one that we call the short version of Mark's uh, resurrection story. But most scholars will tell you that Mark's telling of the resurrection probably ended at verse 8, the last verse that we read today, with later verses added on at one time or another by another editor or two who perhaps were not so happy with the way Mark had ended his gospel. 
In Mark's version of the story, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bring spices to the tomb so that they could anoint the body. This was something that was usually done before the tomb was closed, but they weren't able to do that. And so they came to the tomb that day and worried about the stone that was in front of the cave, wondering who might move it for them when they arrive and find that the stone has already been rolled away. You can imagine their surprise, which became even greater when they stepped inside the tomb and saw a young man dressed in a white robe. The passage says that they were alarmed. I imagine they were. The young man then told them that Jesus was raised from the dead and that the women were to go and tell the disciples that Jesus had gone ahead of them to Galilee as he had already told them before all the things that started to go downhill, Jesus had already said to them, I will see you again, and I will see you in Galilee. In other words, the young man robed in white told them to tell the disciples to go back to where it all started, to Galilee, and there they would see the risen Christ. And then the story in Mark ends this way. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. As the great preacher Fred Craddock once asked, is this any way to run a resurrection? If you look at the four Gospels, you will find four different versions, actually more different versions of the resurrection story. In one, there is an earthquake. In another, Jesus is mistaken for the gardener, as we heard this morning. In another, Jesus appears to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And in another, Peter and another disciple show up at the tomb. In one version, it is only the women who show up, and they go and tell the disciples who are skeptical and unbelieving. And yet another, we run into doubting Thomas, who has to see and feel the nail-scarred hands. In other words, not only is the how of the resurrection never mentioned, but what happens afterwards is not entirely clear either. The only thing that is clear is that it happened and it had a profound effect on those who followed Jesus, not only in that day, but also in our own day. It's something that's influenced the faith of billions of people over 2,000 years. So you can kind of excuse the women's first reaction, right? Which was to say nothing and then to run in fear. This telling from Mark, I think, has a ring of truth to it about how amazing this event was. That the rules of life and death, that the woman, women had believed to be true up to that moment, just didn't hold anymore. This is the way I think we would have felt if we had come to the empty tomb. But even if Mark's version was the most accurate, the truth is that the women had to have told someone, or Jesus appeared to somebody, or Mark would have never written a word of his gospel. Neither would the other gospel writers have written a single letter or a sentence or a book. In other words, the good news of Jesus Christ would have died on a tree, but it didn't. We celebrate this good news today and every day that we acknowledge and embrace Christ's very real presence in our lives. That we can say with our lives that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. In his book, Whistling in the Dark, a doubter's dictionary, Frederick Buechner writes this on his entry for Easter. He says, Jesus rose. A few saw him briefly and talked to him. If it is true, there is nothing left to say. If it is not true, there is nothing left to say. For believers and unbelievers both, life has never been the same again. Is that the feeling we come with this morning, that life has never been the same again because of the resurrection of Christ? When is it that you begin to believe or embrace or drink in the resurrection of Jesus and what it really means for us? 
Now, I can't give you the first time I believed in the resurrection. I'm not sure if I really remember. But my life has been full of resurrection moments. Times when Christ's presence was so real that the hair stood up on my arms and the best I could do was respond most of the time in silence. One of those times was on a trip to Guatemala many years ago. It's been over 30 years. It's hard to imagine I'm that old. But it happened quite a time ago, and it was part of a Habitat International project. And I had many moments there that were resurrection moments, where the resurrection became real. And one of those was at a Roman Catholic church at the top of a hill. Our group was there to worship one Sunday, and while there, we heard an amazing story about this church and the people in the surrounding village. It was during the long years of civil war in Guatemala when government soldiers would often raid small villages to take young men and force them to serve in the military. Word came to some in the village that the soldiers were on the way to their town. So they ran to the church and began to ring the bell. And that was their signal, ringing the bell, that everyone was to gather in the courtyard in front of the church for an important gathering or because there was a threat. And so people streamed in from everywhere. And this was the same church that the folks in that village worked week after, worshipped week after week, even day after day. They were a people of faith, and they knew that their faith would call on them to act even when all they felt was fear. As the soldiers arrived, automatic weapons in hand, the villagers could have run in fear, but they didn't. Believing that Christ was with them no matter what might happen, they began to surround the soldiers, not to resist with fighting or with whatever weapons that they could find, but to surround them with courage and truth and with God's love. They were ready to suffer, even to die, but they were not willing to lift a hand in anger or revenge. Remarkably, miraculously, the soldiers left without firing a shot, and they never returned. When we worshiped in the church that day, though it was conducted in a language foreign to most of us, we could feel deeply the presence of the risen Christ and the power of the resurrection and what it meant to be a resurrection people, especially when we shared in communion that day. No matter where we were from or whoever we are, we were, we came to that table that day together. I've experienced many a resurrection moment like times beside the bed of someone dying or talking with someone who is dying, ready to let go, and whose faith inspired me during their life, but inspired me even more while they were dying. I've had resurrection moments when I see the youth share faith unafraid, either in worship like they did this morning or at other times, or on a mission trip to Kensington like they did years ago or to Ohio just a year ago. I could go on and on with many a resurrection moment, and you could too, that tell me that each of us bears the truth of the resurrection story, that we are a resurrection people. It wasn't just something that happened long ago or will only have a, some effect on the future, but resurrection is something that is part of us right now, that it can grow in us, as we live in God's present and step in God's future. And as we have been told by God's messengers, whether they were in a white robe or in some other way, we've been told of the good news and how Jesus is present with us now to lead us and will go before us to prepare the way, like he told the disciples or had the message passed along to the disciples so long ago. We too are assured that Jesus is present with us today and goes before us. And so that means we are called then to embrace the resurrection, to practice resurrection. 
We need to embrace and practice love and forgiveness. We need to embrace and practice compassion and grace. We need to embrace and practice listening and serving. We need to embrace and practice humility and losing our life so that we can gain it. We need to embrace and practice what Jesus has taught us through his life and death and resurrection. Nicholas Peter Harvey pointed out in Death's Gift that it wasn't just what Jesus' followers and disciples saw when they saw Jesus, or how they saw it, but what was set free in them. We too have been set free. May we have the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the hearts and minds to embrace the freedom and responsibility that we have been given in Christ. May we indeed be a people who live out the resurrection in our lives. By doing that, we will say with our lives each and every day, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. we have heard and seen this morning, now let us affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into the heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We now take time to collect our morning offering to give back to the life and the ministry of all that we do here at Zwingli United Church of Christ. And so I invite you to give as you are led as the offering plates are passed. So I invite the ushers forward to help collect the offering. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we ask you this day to bless the offerings that we have given, to bless our lives, that your ministry, that your love, that your compassion may be spread throughout the world. Help us, O oh God, to not only give from our treasure, but also to give from our hearts, so that we might be a resurrection people, following in the way of our Savior. Amen. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the Gospels tell us that on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, on that same day sat at table with two disciples, and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks, Holy One. Almighty, eternal God, always and everywhere, through Jesus Christ, the only begotten by you before all time, by whom you made the world and all things. We bless you for your continual love and care for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image and for calling us to be your people. Although we rebelled against your love, you did not abandon us in our sin but sent us prophets and teachers to lead us into the way of salvation. Above all, we gave, give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, 
our Savior, who is the way, the truth, and the life. In the fullness of time, you came to us and received our nature in the person of Jesus, who in obedience to you, by suffering on the cross and being raised from the dead, delivered us from the way of sin and death. We praise you that Jesus now reigns with you in glory and ever lives to pray for us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us into truth, defends us in adversity, and gathers us from every people to unite us in one holy church. Therefore, with the entire company of saints in heaven and on earth, we worship and glorify you, God most holy. Please be seated. We remember that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he was with his disciples, and after giving, th giving thanks, he took the bread and broke it. And he said to them, this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, poured out the wine, and said, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us go to God in prayer. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Christ's suffering and death rejoicing in Christ's resurrection and awaiting Christ's return in victory. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine, on our gifts and on us. Strengthen your universal church that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. And now hear us, O God, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for you.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready. Having partaken in this meal together, let us now pray together the prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks that you have given yourself to us, Lord. You have raised us with Christ and made us a new people. Your glory has filled our hearts. Amen.
Because Jesus has been raised from the dead, your life can be full. So go into every place and every day as people brimming with the love of God. Be graceful in spirit, hopeful in word, faithful in deed. Live for the risen Christ as Christ lives in you. And now may the grace of God, the presence of the risen Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.